we sing a song um, just a few moments ago about how, how God is jealous for us. God loves us so much, and it's so far beyond the, the romantic Valentine's Day kind of love that, that you and I so often are bombarded with. God loves us to the very center of who he is. He loves us so much. He loves us so much that, that there are extremes that we can't even imagine that we would do for somebody. But God did. God sent Jesus, his son, his son. could thrive and be alive so that we could have that God-sized hole in our heart filled with God and not all the other junk that we try to shove in there. The gospel story is alive in the life of the church. We pray this, 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 this story. We, we ask God today to, to, to make real all again as we look to this family and we pick up corners together as the church. We've been walking through through 1 John and talking about what it means to follow Jesus and today in a very real way there's an invitation for you to follow Jesus to be as Jesus was, to do as Jesus did to heal hearts to offer forgiveness offer love to people that need love to offer food to the people that need food one of the ways that we follow Jesus is by helping others and we do that selflessly helping others is the most selfless thing that we do but here's the catch when we are so selfless that we're helping others it really does help us too that should not be your motivation but I want to tell you it happens your life is purified again and again. I don't know if it's, a, it's an insulation kind of thing or not, but, but as we help others, as our minds are focused on helping others, what happens is we're not focused on us. We're not focused on our needs, our wants, our stuff. We're so focused on what it is that God wants and that person, that thing, that opportunity in front of us that needs so much greater than we need. In 1 John chapter 2, we hear these words in verse, uh, verse 9. And he's talking about, once again, what it means to, to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he's going. Because the darkness has blinded him. The darkness has blinded him. First John is written as a, as a warning, as, a, as an opportunity, as a call to the church to be mindful of the commitment that they've made to be Christ's followers. As they follow Jesus, our lives cannot be filled with hate. And here the example is towards your brother. We have to help and not hate. To follow Jesus means that I am committed to help and not hate. And that, that seems to be obvious, but there's so many times in our lives where we can just turn our back and it doesn't seem overly hate-filled, it just seems inconvenient for us to help. But if we do not love enough to bring people that we love enough into the presence of the one who loves enough, then that is hate. We don't care enough. Confront it, to deal with it, to show it. We're called to help as we follow Jesus. We're called to do that. Helping others keeps the love that we know of Christ in our hearts, on our hands, on our lips. It reminds us daily the cost. It reminds us daily what it is that we have been saved from. The darkness, the hopelessness, the sinfulness that we have lived. As we walk out into this world and we follow Jesus, 
want you to understand and realize, as this passage shows us, that we are to walk in the light, not the darkness. We're not even to flirt with the darkness. We're not even to tiptoe in the dark. We're not even to, to step over into the shadow that is darkness. We're people of light. We've been called into that light. And we're to show, reflect, mirror that light everywhere that we go every circumstance my prayer for us this week this church each of you is that you would take up that challenge to be light to help others in jesus name to to make a difference because a difference has been made in you to love your brother way more than you love yourself to follow god as he leads you into difficult places and difficult situations to understand that that he alone is worthy of our worship and nothing else that we allow to occupy his space will ever be enough will ever fix the problem will ever provide light in dark places and will continue to stumble and trip and fall this morning i want you to remember not just the bible account of Jesus and the healing of this man. And not just the encouragement from John as to how we're to, to love one another and to, to dispel hate, but, but to truly engage in people's lives. But I want you to, to think about and to embrace what it truly means for you this week. Whose corner are you going out and picking up? Who, who are you encouraging this week to get on that stretcher? Who are you walking beside as you're walking them to Jesus? Following Jesus means that you're leading others to Jesus. Let me pray for us this morning. Father God, we love you, and we want to thank you for, for all the goodness that's in our lives. But God, we also want to thank you for all the, the trials that we've been through. Because God, it's, 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 it's purified us. It cleanses us. God, it focuses our mind on you. And as we focus on you, Father, our, our marching orders are clear that we're to love you and to love others. Not, not on a temporary basis, not on an hour by hour when it's convenient basis, but God, we're to love you and love others constantly, eternally, perpetually. We're to love. And loving means we engage, we care. We know the circumstances. We take up the corner. We convince them to get on the mats, and we gather others around us to carry our friends, the people that we run into, the appointments that we have. We carry them to Jesus. Even though it's tough, even though it's crowded, there's always room at Jesus' feet. Father, help us this morning as we live out that commitment to follow Jesus. Show us in our own lives, in our own families, in our own circumstances, Father, where that needs to happen, who that needs to happen with. And Father, today as a church, we commit to prayerfully walk beside the King family, to walk beside Catherine in whatever way that we can. Father, we love you. And God, we thank you for Jesus, that he purified us and that he purifies us as we help others. God, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray.